to address. Uh, the next motion, Your Honor, is the sanctions motion in connection with the uh, non, well, the, the, the issues with the, the Google Analytics spreadsheet. Um, right, and do you, are we also addressing today the um, free speech system and PQPR issue? Is that on your list as well? I'm just that it that is on my list as well, Your Honor. Um, yes, we had asked for a um, a charge on that issue. All right, so I'll hear your argument on the Google Analytics issue, Your Honor. So uh, on Friday afternoon. Uh, we learned that contrary to representations by um, the Jones defendants in their motion and, and by counsel, uh, that a Google Analytics spreadsheet does in fact exist. We had been told uh, that it did not exist in no uncertain terms and repeatedly. Uh, and the, this comes in a sequence of misconduct in connection with the Google Analytics that has been going on since the beginning of the case. Um, so there is just no possible way that there was a lack of understanding of the importance of this evidence. Um, it is profoundly disturbing that those representations would have been made to the court. Um, and what we're asking for is significant sanctions. We're asking both for a, um, an instruction that the uh, defendants not be permitted to argue uh, what the intended purpose, as best we can tell, of those spreadsheets would have been, which was to establish that the Jones defendants did not profit from uh, what they said about Sandy Hook. So we would ask that the defendants be precluded from arguing or offering evidence that they did not profit or did not substantially profit. That's the first relief that we had asked for, and that is the relief that we had asked for even before we learned this evidence had been concealed. Now that we understand the evidence was concealed and we understand what it is, what, part of what it is, Judge, is we received Google Analytics data through June of 2019. There was a, an obligation to continue to produce Google Analytics data because the underlying requests for production go through the present day. So what, what we learned when we saw this spreadsheet is that there are three years of Google Analytics data that was not produced. We're still in the process of analyzing what the spreadsheet does. So the ramifications of what has been withheld are something that we're still coming to understand. But the reason why we sought an emergency hearing and the reason why we're asking for significant sanctions is because this isn't just an isolated incident. This is a very significant um, concealment of the existence of relevant evidence concerning website traffic and concerning the relationship between website traffic and purchases. All right, Attorney Pattis. My understanding of this item is that it was created in March of 2022 and in connection with preparation of the corporate rep in the Texas case. Um, had I known it had been prepared, I certainly would have represented to the court that it had not been. Well, I don't think I heard Attorney Pattis any suggestion that you were sitting on it and didn't turn it over. No, I understand that. I so just this wanted is, to address that right. in, in, as a threshold matter. Right. This is your client's obligation to fully and fairly comply and to supplement compliance. So here, yeah, so here is what I believe to be the case. Um, I'm not trying to relitigate issues that are the law of the case. The client's shop is not well organized and is a mess. I think it had the debtor in possession not been in place to respond to the request that I made after our hearing last week, I don't know that I would have gotten one, um, to be candid. Um, and, but but, but here it, again, what you got is not no, I understand. a but, concern to me. But the Roddy, the Roddy <laughs> affidavit, as I read it, says that this item, the, the Google, Google Analytics is not a book on a shelf in a library maintained in, on site. I, I'm it well is, aware of that. Well, I'm sorry. I don't. It, it, it is a database that they consult. 
There's no evidence that this database was consulted between 1919 and 2022, none. And so it's, in effect, after acquired evidence. Um, the, the, the claim wants to be that there was target marketing of content to drive clicks to the page. If they didn't access this item until 2022, how do you get an inference that they, that, that, that they, were, aware, they were even aware of it or used it or relied upon it? There simply is none. And so it's an awkward juncture in the litigation. I'm not happy about it. But I think that the plaintiffs ask for too much. Uh, because if the Roddy affidavit is to be credited, and it's the only contravailing evidence there is as to this, the item didn't exist until 2022, and in the affidavit he asserts that no one relied upon it to his knowledge, and he's been there since 2013, um, and hence it's a non-issue. So our claim is it's not relevant. Attorney Sterling? Yes, Your Honor. <clears throat> so we have been hearing this argument from the defendants since the beginning of the case, which is, well, we have Google Analytics, but we don't use Google Analytics. Um, and so we have the data, but we don't use the data. Now, that's obviously not true, because Mr. Roddy used the data. And not. And the other thing is, the data has been collected, Your Honor. The, the, I mean, this we got three years of data, and a defendant who collected three years of data, meaning, and by the three years, I mean between 2019 and 2022, and is saying that they don't use the program, even though they're running the program. It's not credible. There are no affidavits in before the court to establish they don't use it. Once again, we're dealing with unsworn representations. Um, and this is in a long history of them denying that they use Google Analytics. This is this was part of the court's default ruling um, that their their the court in that default ruling rejected their claims concerning Google Analytics. I mean, this this is part of a pattern to conceal their web analytics. May I be heard briefly? Here? Briefly. They don't have Google Analytics any more than I have Encyclopedia Britannica. Um, it's, a, it's a library. It's, an, it's a device that you can consult and use. There's no evidence in this case that they consulted and used it at the relevant time period in this case. There is evidence that in 2022, in response to a question apparently from Texas Council, something was generated and shown to a corporate rep. You can't attribute that back to conduct that's relevant in this case. That is the period from 2012 to 2018, and say because it existed on a shelf in the library, they went to read it, and that's what the plaintiffs are asking for. We reject we re, we reject that notion as inherently speculative, and they're seeking once again to to, to permit that to proceed by by way of judicial ruling what they need to prove, and they know they can't prove. There was no reliance on Google Analytics in that period. There's no evidence in the record to support it. All right, I didn't have much to say in ruling on the motion for advisory jury findings, but I do have something to say on the Google Analytics issue. So I think we all know that it is the obligation of the party to fully and fairly comply with their discovery obligations and to supplement their discovery responses accordingly. The standard is not whether defense counsel only has to turn over what is within their knowledge, possession, or power. It is the clients, the defendants, who must produce that which is within their knowledge, possession, or power. And whether defense counsel knew or didn't know whether or when Mr. Roddy was asked to create Google Analytics documents in the Texas case is not an excuse. The fact of the matter is, based on the defendant's own filings, the free speech systems corporate designee that defense counsel picked, free speech system employee, e-commerce manager, Mr. Roddy, and the defendant's Texas attorneys were all well aware of the existence of the Google Analytics report half a year ago. But in this case, the defendants filed pleadings with the court representing that Mr. Roddy had no Google Analytics documents, didn't know what the corporate 
representative was referring to, and perhaps the most egregious representation in the filings, states that the defendant contends and has always contended that neither he nor the various entities with which he is affiliated has such data, and that there was nothing more that could be done. The defendants knew of the existence of the Google Analytic documents at a time these representations were made to the court by their counsel. So I'll make the following observation. This stunningly cavalier attitude with respect to their discovery obligations is what led to the default in the first place. The defendants have consistently engaged in dilatory and obstructive discovery practices from the inception of these cases right through to the trial. And finally, I will note that is, there is no notice in this file to this minute of any supplemental compliance producing the Google Analytic documents, which is required by the practice book, but was also required by my clear court order of September 30, 2021, which apparently was not followed here. So the motion is denied for these reasons, and the court hereby sanctions the defendants by precluding them from presenting evidence or argument that they did not profit from the Sandy Hook coverage. All right, and now you're, is this the Judge, free I think you granted here? the motion. You said you denied it. I, I'm sorry, the motion's granted. Thank you, Your Honor. And then the, la the last one is the free speech system and PQPR issue? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Did I miss something in the file? Was a counter affidavit ever filed in the file? Because if it was, yes. it, if it was, I missed it. Uh, Your Honor, I, I believe that was not filed. I, I looked pretty carefully because I knew um, it wasn't filed before the deadline, but I also checked everything to make sure it wasn't filed after the deadline. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting with Mr. Bruce, who asserts that it was. Can you defer on this then and while we clear that I, up? I think we're going to do it right now. We're, we're actually a little bit ahead of schedule, so um, I'm happy to just the, stand by. Do you have an, any idea of the date or the document that it was filed in? And I'll help you look. We received it Friday evening. It was filed yesterday morning. Or we, we no, received it Thursday evening. It was filed, filed I believe, yesterday morning. Your Honor, we did receive an affidavit. My issue is I, I, I did not see it filed. So I'll, I'll tell you what's in the file from, <clears throat> from the defendants. I'll start from September 9th, okay, so that we won't miss anything. So on September 9th, I have the defendant's ob uh, objection list. Then I have, um, I think, six filings of exhibits, <clears throat> which were then electronically filed. September 12th, I have the um, defendant's reply to the motion for sanctions regarding the Google Analytics, which I did review. Also on that date, I have the defendant's preliminary jury charge with the proposed language. Also on September 12th, I have the defendant's edited response to the motion for sanctions regarding the Google Analytics, which I also reviewed. So <clears throat> I looked very carefully because I was surprised that it wasn't filed. So I, I think at this point we need to proceed. Yes, Your Honor. So is there something that you have, Attorney Pattis, that you shared with Attorney Sterling that just didn't get in the file, perhaps? We, I'm relying on what I'm told. We received an affidavit. I sent it over. I sent it to Mr. Ferraro uh, Thursday evening. He said it's got to be in the file. I directed my office to get it into the file. If it's not there, I can't account for it. I can't keep track of every detail. 
Um, however, I'm responsible for them. I believe it was filed. I'm told it was by a person I rely upon. The court doesn't see it in the file. I can't account for that, and I'm not going to try to. Is it I something that you sh that you already shared with Attorney Sterling? Yes. Is that yes, correct? Your Honor, that is correct. I have right. seen is the affidavit. Is this something then that we is it we don't need this for the opening? I don't intend to address it. <clears throat> your Honor, as as long as uh, PQPR is not addressed in the opening, um, then I think we don't have a problem. I do not intend to address PQPR. All right, so then I'll pass this one and Thank I'll you. give your office an opportunity to file um, whatever it was that needs to be filed. And once I have an opportunity to look at it, I'll let you know and we can deal with it accordingly. Thank okay. you. No problem. Your Honor, the final issue is the uh, preliminary charge. Both parties had submitted. I, I read them and I charges. came up with my language, so I'm all set on that. Uh, and Your Honor, may, may we have an opportunity to see that before the court gives it? I suppose I could read it to you. I mean, it's sort of in my script, scribble scrabble. Um, uh, however, the court would would like to do that. I, we just would like an opportunity. Well, to, I don't to think see it really it matters case. so much, though. You'll hear it in a minute, right? I mean, it's very. There was only one paragraph I saw that you disagreed on. Correct. That is correct, right. Your Honor. So I didn't pick either one, and I came up with my own. So uh, I'm just, happy to do it on a sidebar if you want me to just read the sentence to you. Uh, that would be helpful, okay. Your Honor. All right. Attorney Pattis, what do you have by way of ho housekeeping matters? Uh, that I think just to clarify the status of exhibits, Judge, I have not yet submitted an amended list exhibit, uh, eliminating the duplicate um, um, exhibits, and I will do so. Um, my understanding is that the exhibits that have been offered by the plaintiffs thus far are what they intend to use in the next day or so. They've avoided ones to which I raised an objection. We stand by those objections in the event those exhibits are subsequently offered, but I don't think they need to be considered today. Okay, anything else from your no. perspective? Okay. Um, during the trial, if there, and I know I already said this in my um, trial management order, I, just with objections, you know, objection, one word basis. That's all I need. I don't want to hear any colloquy. I don't want to hear any argument before the jury that shouldn't be had. But if there is an issue that you think needs to be argued outside the presence of the jury, I'm amenable to do that. Uh, are you anticipating now any such evidentiary issues? Will the court entertain sidebars? Well, it's on the record. Um, so um, may sidebars. We approach, may we approach right now? On the record, certainly. Okay. 